Hello, and thanks for tuning in. Let's talk duplexers. So, picture this scenario. You are transmitting less power available to you from your repeater system. Why? Because you are using a flat pack. Although most of these guys are advertised as 50 watts, they can only handle anywhere between 30 to 35 watts before you start running into desense issues. On the other hand, the pay station, the commercial ones available, are just too expensive and you don't want to spend the money on any of those units. Well, I am here to introduce to you a solution to both scenarios. This is the BMD 480-4 UHF duplexer, tunable from 440 to 520 MHz. This is what we refer to as base station performance in a mobile size package with an insertion loss of 0.65 dB maximum and 80 dB minimum. It is great for both commercial and mobile applications, not limited to amateur, GMRS, as well as emergency ma management. This is a perfect alternative to the base station duplexes based on its compact size performance and price and it is gaining popularity. Just as I said in the beginning, it outperforms the flat packs due to its power handling capabilities of 100 watts. Now, this duplexer does anywhere from 5 to 10 megahertz split. That is what it is designed for. But it can also do a 3 megahertz split with slight deterioration in specs. It is a 2 by 2 inch 4 cavity unit with high Q trimmer capacitors and end connectors for the low pass, high pass, and the antenna port. It also comes with built in temperature compensation. In other words, it is not going to move off of frequency due to fluctuations in temperature. It comes pre tuned, so all you need to do is to provide your transmit and receive frequencies and it will be shipped to you ready to use out of the box. Any further questions? All you need to do is to go to the link in the description below and contact us. We are ready to answer any questions that you might have. Without further ado, let's tune this unit and see what results we get. Okay, so we're going to tune the BMD 480-4. I have my VNA already calibrated and I have markers on 440 and 445 for a 5 megahertz split. I have divided my trace into two. So on the left screen, what we'll be seeing here will be the reflection measurements and on the right, what we'll be seeing here will be the transmission measurements. So we are going to tune the low pass and the high pass and see if we can actually get anywhere close to the results that this unit is specified for. So I'm going to bring my cables in and I'm going to start at the low pass port. So my reflection cable, I plug into the low pass port. As you can see on the screen, let us screen to your left. The other cable I plug at the antenna port. And I put a termination load at the high pass port. Okay, let's start with the first cavity. We're going to start pushing it down until we get a nice dip in return loss. That is marker 1, 440. And I'm going to use my tuning tool 
to bring the notch over to marker two. I'll do the same for the second cavity for the low pass side. Remember, this is all preliminary. We'll be coming back to this to do a fine tuning. So the notch over to marker two. Now we're gonna swap ports. We're gonna bring the load to the low pass port and my reflection cable to the high pass port. the same for the two cavities for the high pass side so we'll be passing 445 and rejection will be on 440 so let's push this one down until we get a nice dip and return loss if you look on the left of your screen you can see marker 2 is getting into the valley that's where I want it to be somewhere there close enough for now and I'm going to use my tuning tool to move the notch over to marker one. That is on your right, on the right screen. Done. I'll do that to the last cavity. The notch should get deeper now. Okay, since this is preliminary, I'm going to leave it there for now. And I'm going to move this notch over to marker two. Interesting enough, we already have half a dB insertion loss and 91.5 dB rejection. And if you look at the return loss, we are 32.3. So let's go back to the low pass side and start doing our fine tuning. So again, I'm going to swap the load with the reflection cable. The insertion loss is now at 0.58 and we've got 90 dB of rejection at the low pass side. Let's see if we can tweak it a little bit better and try and match the return loss as we had it on the other side. In other words, what I normally do at this point when I realize that I have both notches on, which I'm going to check right now to make sure both notches are exactly on. So I'm going to move one away. Okay. It looks like they weren't. So the second one, I'm going to put right on it. And I'm going to bring the second one back. Okay. So 0.58 and then 91 and a half. So the return loss at this point is 21.4, which already meets specs. Just like the insertion loss and the return loss, uh, what the insertion loss and the rejection loss values, they also meet specifications. But I like to go one step further. 
what I do is I balance out the output return loss. I already know the high pass is good. But what I try to do is balance the output return loss. That's get the values as close as possible to each other. So in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my reflection cable and I'll plug it to the antenna port. Whilst I have two termination loads, one on the low side and one on the high side. So here we are, reflection cable is on the antenna port. We already had a termination on load on the high pass. So I'm going to put another one on the low pass side. Let me move this screen away so we can just take a close look only at this area. Now on the high pass side, the return loss is 31.9, which is, I would say 32. And then on the low pass side, we have 23. So I'm going to try and play around with my tuning rods only to see if I can match these as good as possible. Sometimes just moving one rod will do the trick. So I'm going to try I'm working on the low pass side right now. Okay. That was a nice dip. So now I'm going to try and see probably on the high pass side if I can move marker 2 close to 1. Just to balance them out. Okay. Okay, now we have 40 and 42, close enough, but I like to get them a lot closer. It looks like that's the best I can get from the high pass side. So let me go back to the low pass side and probably just give it a little touch to see if I can get it close to what it is at the high pass side. At this point, steady fingers. So we have on both the high pass and the low pass side, 40 dB, 40.3 and 40.1, close enough. At this point, what I normally do will be to lock it down. But just for the sake of this video, I'm not going to do that step. But I'm going to go back and retune both the low pass and the high pass because I touched the tuning rods, the notches have definitely moved. So I'm gonna go back to my low pass port with a reflection cable, a termination load on the high pass, and I'm gonna come back with the other cable at the antenna port. Okay. The return loss is at 38.4. We have an insertion loss of 0.59, I would say 0 0.6, but as you can see, the notches have moved. So let's move one notch away completely. Put the second one on. At this point, steady hands and patience. And then bring the other one back.
So, this is a tuned low pass side with 0.58 dB insertion loss, 0.6 I'll call it, and 90.9. .9. So I'd say 90 dB rejection with a return loss of 38 dB. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save this trace and I'm going to display data in memory. I'll do the same at the reflection. And let me move my little screen here out of the way so we can do some comparisons. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to move the cable from the low pass port and swap it with the load at the high pass port. Tuning this duplexer is easy and straightforward. You do it once and you become a pro. All right, so this one over here is the memory, which was the low pass side, and this is the data. So if you look at it, at this point, marker one is definitely off the mark. It's not on the notch. So we have to readjust our trimmer capacitors. I'm going to move one away. The second one is now bang on, so let's bring it in. There it is. And let's bring the one that we moved away back onto marker one. Okay, so to me, that's a tuned cavity. We've got 0 0.51 and 91 dB of rejection, whereas the return loss is at 35.5. So if you look at it, we get almost exactly the same responses, both in the high pass and the low pass. Both meet specs. 0 0.65 dB is max. In this case, we got just about 0 0.6 on one side and 0 0.5 on the other side. And both of them with a rejection, about 90 dB. So in this case, I think this unit actually does what it says it can do. Welcome back. So from the results we got from the tuning, we can say this unit does meet specs and goes beyond that. If you're interested in seeing what kind of curves or response curves you get from one of these, just send us your transmit and receive frequencies and we will tune one and send you the results for your perusal. Just so you can see what kind of response curves this will provide for you. Before leaving, do not forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons so you can be notified when we upload more content. If you have any comments, please go ahead and write it as well. Thank you.